CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. The FBI reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email use. Whatever you want. Grab him by the it was late in 2013 when the 2016 election began to get talked about. The people were wondering who was going to run. And other news outlets have already started speculating about who the contenders are for the next presidency, despite the fact that we've only reached 100 days into this president's term. It seemed that the general consensus for the Democrats was that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton would run and likely become the nominee, even though she hadn't announced candidacy. Now, Secretary Clinton says she hasn't made up her mind about whether she's running yet, but me thinks she doth not make up her mind yet too much. <laughs> there was also talk about Vice President Joe Biden running for president on the Democratic ticket. I haven't made that decision, and I don't have to make that decision for a while. The Republicans were nearly certain that Florida Governor Jeb Bush, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, and many other senators and governors were going to run for office, as the Republicans were unhappy with President Obama's job and wanted to be back in power. But the sad reality is we got to this point because of the poor, careless foreign policy decisions that have been made by the administration. Obama's approval rating had been slowly decreasing throughout 2013, dropping to 41% by December. It wasn't until 2014 that Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders started to consider a run for president. Personal story segment tonight, just about everybody believes Hillary Clinton will be the Democratic nominee for president in 2016, but there are some on her left that may give a challenge. One of those may be Senator Bernie Sanders from Vermont. Bernie Sanders considered himself a socialist. You are a socialist. What, what does that mean? Uh, what it means is that we have a lot to learn from democratic socialist governments that have existed in countries like Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway, where higher education is free, where they have a strong child care program, where they don't have the massive type of income and wealth inequality uh, that we have in the United States of America. Right. In late 2014, Jim Webb became the first candidate to form an exploratory committee for a presidential campaign. I have decided to launch an exploratory committee to examine whether I should run for president in 2016. Jeb Bush soon followed, creating a PAC for his potential campaign. In 2012, Barack Obama fought a tough campaign against Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, and Barack Obama won the fight. I have just called President Obama to congratulate him on his victory. Many Republicans were wondering whether or not Romney would run again in 2016. In January of 2015, he officially declined. After putting considerable thought into making another run for president, I've decided it's best to give other leaders in the party the opportunity to become our next nominee. In March of 2015, Texas Senator Ted Cruz became the first candidate to officially announce their candidacy in the 2016 race. I am announcing that I'm running for president of the United States. Many politicians from both parties follow Cruz and announce their candidacies. In May, Jeb Bush was asked a question about his brother and former president George W. Bush's decision to enter and invade Iraq. He stumbled on the question and ended up giving many different answers throughout the week. Knowing what we know now, would you have authorized the invasion? I would have, and so, so would have Hillary Clinton, just to remind everybody, and so would have almost everybody that was confronted with the intelligence they got. So in other words, if in 2020 hindsight, you would make a different decision? Yeah, I don't know what that decision would have been. That's a hypothetical, but the simple fact is mistakes were made. I heard some, I didn't, whatever I heard, it was translated, knowing what you knew then, what would you do? Knowing what we know now, what would you have done? I would have not engaged, I would not have gone into Iraq. During the week, Bush's Republican rivals attacked him for the answer. Would you have authorized the invasion of Iraq? Uh, of, of course not. If we knew then what we know now, and I were the president of the United States, I wouldn't have gone to war. In May and June of 2015, neurosurgeon Ben Carson, former Hewlett Packard CEO Carly Fiorina, and real estate mogul Donald Trump announced their candidacies for president for the Republican Party. Donald Trump got the most attention, especially for his comments in his announcement speech. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some 
I assume are good people. That are killers and rapists. I mean, they're coming into this country. Mexico treats us as though we are stupid people, which of course our leaders are. I love China, but their leaders are much smarter than our leaders. Many people thought that Trump was running as a joke. You read through the news and it's just so dry and boring, you can't even begin to see where the jokes might be. And then on other days... I am officially running for President of the United States. That's right, everybody! People who legitimately supported Trump were laughed at. Which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> Trump's comments received heavy backlash, even resulting in NBC severing ties with the Donald. NBC Universal said today it is cutting ties with Trump, dropping his Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants. Later on, Trump made a harsh comment about Arizona Senator John McCain. He's he a hit war me. Hero. He's not a war, He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war PSW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. McCain wasn't hurt himself, but he thought that Trump should apologize to the people that he did offend. John, Donald Trump owe you an apology? No, I don't think so, but I think he may owe an apology to the those who have sacrificed in conflict. So how are the candidates doing in the polls at this point? On the Republican side, Donald Trump was in the lead, with Jeb Bush in a close second. Scott Walker was in third, and the other candidates trailed behind. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton was in a distant lead, getting 63% of the votes in early polling. Bernie Sanders in second, and Joe Biden in third, who hadn't announced his candidacy, with the rest in a distant last. That's why I'm just taking just a short amount of time here and making it my mission tonight to help Lincoln Chafee get from 0% all the way to 1% in the <laughs> With 18 major Republican candidates, it was time to start having debates. The first Republican debate took place in Cleveland and was hosted by Fox News. The first question already divided Trump from the rest of the candidates, and he was attacked by other candidates on the stage. Is there anyone on stage, and can I see hands, who is unwilling tonight to pledge your support to the eventual nominee of the Republican Party and pledge to not run an independent campaign against that person. Again, we're looking for you to raise your hand now. Raise your hand now if you won't make that pledge tonight. Mr. Trump. I cannot say I have to respect the person that if it's not me, the person that wins. If I do win and I'm leading by quite a bit, uh, that's what I want to do. We want to win and we will win, but I want to win as the Republican. I want to run as the Republican nominee. He buys and sells politicians of all stripes. He's already, hey, look, look, he's already hedging his bet on the Clintons, okay? After that, Megyn Kelly asked Trump a question regarding women. Mr. Trump. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides, in particular when it comes to women. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only has Rosie several, O'Donnell. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? I think the big problem this country has is being politically correct. I've been... Trump responded to this viciously after the debate. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her, wherever, but uh, she was, uh, in my opinion, she was uh, off base. Was uh, talking about, said you had a, a legitimate beef about the questions that were asked. I'm curious, so, um, I mean, obviously it's not in Fox News' best interest to be in a war with you. It's not in your best interest to be in a war with Fox News. The fact is that uh, I think I don't get treated well by Fox, and that's all right, because look what happens. I don't understand it myself. I mean, I have double-digit leads in every poll. The fact is, she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. I just got back from a weekend at the beach with my husband and my three kids. Did anything happen in the news while I was gone? Apparently, Mr. Trump thought the question I asked was unfair and felt I was attacking him. I felt he was asked a tough but fair question. We agreed to disagree. 
Mr. Trump did interviews over the weekend that attacked me personally. I've decided not to respond. Mr. Trump is an interesting man who has captured the attention of the electorate. That's why he's leading in the polls. Trump, who is the front runner, will not apologize. And I certainly will not apologize for doing good journalism. So I'll continue doing my job without fear or favor. Back at the debate, Rand Paul and Chris Christie had a hefty argument. Do you really believe you can assign blame to Senator Paul just for opposing the bulk collection of people's phone records in the event of a terrorist attack? Yes, I do. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm the only person on this stage who's actually filed applications under the Patriot Act. And I will make no apologies ever for protecting the lives and the safety of the American people. We have to give more tools to our folks to be able to do that, not fewer, and then trust those people and oversee them. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from innocent Americans. The Fourth Amendment was what we fought the revolution over. Megan, that's a, that, you know, that's a completely ridiculous answer. I want to collect more records from terrorists, but less records from other people. How are you supposed to know, Megan? Use the Fourth what are you Amendment. To, how are you supposed Use to? Use the Fourth no, Amendment. No, I'll tell you how you look, get a warrant. Let me tell you something. You get go, a judge to sign when a you, uh, you know, Senator. Wait, wait. Every time you did a case, you got a warrant from a judge. I'm talking and about searches without warrants, there is indiscriminately no of all Americans' records, and that's what I fought to end. I don't trust President Obama with our records. I know you gave him a big hug. And if you want to give him a big hug again, go right in. During the election cycle, Hillary Clinton was having some issues of her own. It had been discovered that she had been using a private email server during her tenure as Secretary of State. In fact, today, tonight, according to the New York Times, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton used her personal email account to conduct government business. She was caught making contradictory statements. Because I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. So I, do, I have a, 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 you know, a, an iPad, a mini iPad, an iPhone, and a Blackberry. And even sending classified emails on her private server, which was allegedly less secure than a Gmail account. The question is whether classified information was ever put at risk because of her unusual use of the server in her home. It's debate season. In the second Republican debate, Trump was asked a question about a comment he had made about Carly Fiorina. In an interview last week in Rolling Stone magazine, Donald Trump said the following about you, quote, look at that face, would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? Mr. Trump later said he was talking about your persona, not your appearance. Please feel free to respond what you think about his persona. Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. She's got a beautiful face, and I think she's a beautiful woman. Trump's views on illegal immigration were emphasized when Jeb Bush's wife was brought into the conversation. Governor Bush, Mr. Trump has suggested that your views on immigration are influenced by your Mexican-born wife. Did Mr. Trump go too far in invoking your wife? He did. He did. Um, you're proud of your family, just as I am. Correct. To subject my wife into the middle of a raucous political conversation was completely inappropriate, and I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. know her, and this she is, is a total She is absolutely the love of my life, and she's right here, and why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing yeah. wrong. My wife is a Mex Mexican-American. She's an American by choice. She loves this country as much as anybody in this room. And she wants a secure border, but she wants to embrace the traditional American values that make us special and make us unique. Said inside of this. That they come into our country as an act of love. With all of the problems that we have in so many instances, we have wonderful people coming in, but with all of the problems, this is not an act of love. But weak on immigration, he doesn't get my vote. The subject of marijuana was also discussed. I think one of the great problems and what the American people don't like about politics is hypocrisy. People who have one standard for others and not for, them, for themselves. There's at least one prominent example on the stage of someone who says they smoked pot in high school. I want to give that... I want to give the person that you call the hypocrite uh, an opportunity to respond. Do you want to identify that person? Well, I think if we left it open, we could see how many people smoked pot in high school. <laughs> 
Is there somebody you were specifically thinking of? Well, you know, the thing is, he was is talking that, about me. Yeah, I was talking That's about. That's what I thought, so, but well, I wanted let, let me, to say let, it. Well, I wanted to point, make me, it easier for him. Yeah. Okay. And I just did. Governor Bush, please. So 40 years ago, I smoked marijuana, uh, and I admit it. I'm sure that other people might have done it and may not want to say it in front of 25 million people. My mom's not happy that I just did. <laughs> The thing is, is that in Florida, Governor Bush campaigned against medical marijuana. That means that a small child like Morgan Hintz that has 500 seizures a day is failing on nine traditional medications, is not allowed to use cannabis oil, and that if they attempt to do that in Florida, they will take the child away, they will put the parents in jail. It was the first step towards getting to a Colorado place, and as a citizen of Florida, I voted no. In the first Democratic debate, a major topic of discussion was gun control. Which is it? Shield the gun companies from lawsuits or uh, not? Uh, let's begin, Anderson, by understanding uh, that Bernie Sanders has a D minus voting record from the NRA. Let's answer. also understand that back in 1988, when I first ran for the United States Congress, way back then, I told the gun owners of the state of Vermont and I told the people of the state of Vermont, a state which has virtually no gun control, that I supported a ban on assault weapons. Do I think? that a gun shop in the state of Vermont that sells legally a gun to somebody, and that somebody goes out and does something crazy, that that gun shop owner should be held responsible, I don't. On the other hand, where you have manufacturers and where you have gun shops knowingly giving guns to criminals or aiding and abetting that, of course we should take action. Secretary Clinton, is Bernie Sanders tough enough on guns? No. Not at all. I think that we have to look at the fact that we lose 90 people a day from gun violence. This has gone on too long, and it's time the entire country stood up against the NRA. The majority of our country <laughs> supports background checks, and even the majority of gun owners do. Senator Sanders did vote five times against the Brady Bill. Since it was passed, more than two million prohibited purchases have been prevented. Hillary's email scandal was also brought up. You are going to be testifying before Congress next week about your emails. What does that say about your ability to handle far more challenging crises as president? Well, I've taken responsibility for it. I did say it was a mistake. Uh, what I did was allowed by the State Department, but it wasn't the best choice. But tonight, I want to talk not about my emails, but about what the American people want from the next president Senator of the United Sanders, States. Let me say this. Let me, say, let me say something that may not be great politics, but I think the secretary is right. And that is that the American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> you know? Enough of the emails. Let's talk about the real issues facing America. After that debate, Joe Biden officially announced that he would not be running for president. As my family and I have worked through the, uh, the grieving process, uh, I've said all along uh, what I've said time and again to others, uh, that it may very well be that that process, uh, uh, by the time we get through it, uh, closes the window on mounting a realistic campaign uh, for president that it might close. I've concluded it has closed. The third Republican debate aired on CNBC. Chris Christie, Donald Trump, and Ted Cruz were considered the winners of the debate. This debate was the first major time that the media had come under fire from the Republican Party. Ted Cruz attacked the moderators during the debate. You know, let me say something at the outset. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. This is not a cage match. And you look at the questions, Donald Trump, are you a comic book villain? Ben Carson, can you do math? John Kasich, will you insult two people over here? Marco Rubio, why don't you resign? Jeb Bush, why have your numbers fallen? How about talking about the substantive issues people care about? So this is and a let question me be about clear. the dead limit, which you, you have 30 seconds left to answer, should you choose to do so. <coughs> and nobody watching at home believes that any of the moderators has any intention of voting in a Republican primary. 
The questions that are being asked shouldn't be trying to get people to tear into each other. It should be, what are your substantive okay. solutions okay. Okay. to people? I, I, I just want the mentions. record to reflect. Guys, I asked you about the dead limit, and I got no answer. I, okay, all right, you, on, want, you want me to answer that question? question? I'm happy to answer I, I the question. I'm happy to answer the question, but let me tell you how the question is. Let me tell you how that question is. Let me tell you how that question is. Senator Paul, I've got a question for you So you don't actually want to hear the answer? In a similar fashion, Chris Christie discussed the subject of fantasy football with the debate moderators. And there, there should be some regulation. I have no clue whether the federal government's the proper place. My instinct is to say, hell no, just about everything about the federal government. Carl, are we really talking so here's, Carl, are we really talking about getting we have the government, government involved in fantasy football? Yeah. We have, wait a second, we have $19 trillion in debt, we have people out of work, we have ISIS and Al-Qaeda attacking us, and we're talking about fantasy football? Can we stop? we get the government to do what they're supposed to be doing secure our borders protect our people and support american values and american families enough on fantasy football let people play who cares in early november the political insiders of the republican party were not doing as well as the political outsiders donald trump and ben carson were heavily leading in the polls with jeb bush coming in as low as four percent a major subject of the second democratic debate was terrorism strongly due to the terrorist attacks that occurred in paris the day before this is the new sort of challenge, the new sort of threat that does in fact require new thinking, fresh approaches, and new leadership. As a former mayor and a former governor, there was never a single day, John, when I went to bed or woke up without realizing that this could happen in our own country. Well, John, I think that uh, we have to look at ISIS as the leading threat of an international terror network. It cannot be contained, it must be defeated. Well, John, let me concur with you and with all Americans who were shocked and disgusted by what we saw in Paris yesterday, together leading the world, this country will rid our planet of this barbarous organization called ISIS. In the fourth Republican debate, Trump defended his wall proposal. We are a country of laws. We need borders. We will have a wall. The wall will be built. The wall will be successful, and if you think walls don't work, all you have to do is ask Israel. The wall works, believe me. Properly done. Believe me. Can you just send five million people back with no effect on the economy? You're going to have to bring people. You're going to have to send people out. Look, so we're, a country, we're a country of laws. We either have a country or we don't have a country. We are a country of laws. are going to have to go out, and they'll come back. But they're going to have to go out, and hopefully they get back. But we have no choice if we're going to run our country properly and if we're going to be a country. In early December, Trump announced his plan to ban all Muslims from entering the United States. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. The ban was opposed by Democrats and Republicans alike. Would you be comfortable letting them in? Well, it depends on who they are, but it wouldn't be a religious test. Look, the king of Saudi Arabia, a strong ally of the United States, his son attends Georgetown University. So he's not going to be allowed in. And what is that going to do to our relations with an important ally in the region? <laughs> well, Wolf, it's totally contrary to our values uh, as Americans. Uh, you know, we have in our Bill of Rights um, respect for the freedom of religion. Muslim Americans have made extraordinary contributions to our country. This is not conservatism. Some people like the ban, however. Well, the word is temporarily, and I have many, many friends who are Muslim, and they're great people, and they actually, some of them, not all of them, I will tell you, some of them aren't so thrilled with what I said, but many of them called me and they said, you know, Donald, you're right, we have a problem. I mean, look, there is a problem. Republican, Democrat, media, you name it, is all claiming that what Trump said is dumb, stupid, reckless, dangerous, unconstitutional, while it is the law of the land. Trump and Bush had an exchange regarding the ban during the fifth Republican debate. Governor Bush, you called Mr. Trump unhinged when he proposed banning non-American Muslims from the United States. Why is that unhinged? Well, first of all, we need to destroy ISIS in the caliphate. That's, that should be our objective. The refugee issue will be solved 
if we destroy ISIS there, which means we need to have a no-fly zone, safe zones there for refugees, and to build a military force. And all of that has to be done in concert with the Arab nations. And if we're going to ban all Muslims, how are we going to get them to be part of a coalition to destroy ISIS? We need to engage with the Arab world to make this happen. It is not a serious proposal to say that to the people that you're asking to, for their support, that they can't even come to the country to even engage in a dialogue with us. That's not a serious proposal. So Donald, you know, is great at, at the uh, one-liners, but he's a chaos candidate, and he'd be a chaos president. He would not be the commander-in-chief we need to keep our country safe. Mr. Trump. Jeb doesn't really believe I'm unhinged. He said that very simply because he has failed in this campaign. It's been a total disaster. Nobody cares. And frankly, I'm the most solid person up here. I built a tremendous company. And all I want to do is make America great again. I don't want our country to be taken away from us. And that's what's happening. The policies that we've suffered under other presidents have been a disaster for our country. We want to make America great again. And Jeb, in all fairness, he doesn't believe that. The ban was discussed at the third Democratic debate as well. You have weighed in already on Donald Trump. You've weighed in on the proposed ban. But what would you say to the millions of Americans watching tonight who agree with him? Are they wrong? Well, I think a lot of people are understandably reacting out of fear and anxiety uh, about what they're seeing. First, what they saw in Paris. Now, what they have seen in San Bernardino. Um, and Mr. Trump has a great capacity uh, to use bluster and bigotry to inflame people and to make them think there are easy answers to very complex questions. So what I would say is, number one, we need to be united against the threats that we face. Making sure that Muslim Americans don't feel left out or marginalized at the very moment when we need their help. Leading up to the Iowa caucuses, Ted Cruz's eligibility to run for president was questioned as he was born in Canada to American citizens. Do you believe Senator Ted Cruz is a natural born citizen? I don't know, to be honest, and I like him a lot. And I don't like the issue. I don't like even bringing it up. And you know, it wasn't me that brought it up. It was the Washington Post doing an interview. They asked me, you a question. One of the questions they asked me was this question. And, you know, they went with it, and I wasn't very aggressive with the answer, except one thing. So how do you run against the Democrat, whoever it may be, and you have this hanging over your head? As a legal matter, the question is quite straightforward and settled law, that the child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural-born citizen. Well, I hope he's right. I don't, you know, I want to win this thing fair and square. I don't want to win on this point. What I, what I think I'd do, I'd go and seek a declaratory judgment if I was Ted. What does that mean? It means you go to court. Which court? You go to federal court to ask for a what's called a declaratory judgment. You go in seeking the decision of the court. This was brought up at the next debate. I'll start with you, Senator Cruz. Now, you are, of course, a strict constitutionalist. No one would doubt that. And as you know, the U.S. Constitution says only natural-born citizens are eligible for the office of President of the United States. But that fellow next to you, Donald Trump, and others have said that being born in Canada means you are not natural born, and that has raised questions about your eligibility. Do you want to try to close this topic once and for all tonight? <laughs> well, Neil, I'm glad we are focusing on the important topics of the evening. I, I recognize that Donald is dismayed that his poll numbers are falling in Iowa. But the facts and the law here are really quite clear. Under long-standing U.S. law, the child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural-born citizen. If a soldier has a child abroad, that child is a natural-born citizen. That's why John McCain, even though he was born in Panama, was eligible to run for president. If an American missionary has a child abroad, that child is a natural-born citizen. That's why George Romney, Mitt's dad, was eligible to run for president, even though he was born in Mexico. <laughs> In Iowa now, as you know, Ted, in the last three polls, I'm beating you. So, you know, you shouldn't misrepresent how well you're doing with the polls. You don't have to say that. In fact, I was all for you until you started doing that, because that's a misrepresentation. And if you become the nominee, who the hell knows if you can even serve in office? So you should go out, get a declaratory judgment, let the courts decide, and you why shouldn't you, have mentioned the polls, because I would have been much but different. Why now? Why are you raising this issue now? Because now he's doing a little bit better. No, I didn't care before. It's true. No, it's true. Hey, look, 
He never had a chance. Now he's doing better. He's got probably a four or five percent chance. <laughs> Donald Trump opted out of the seventh Republican debate due to his bad experience with Megyn Kelly at the last Fox News debate. Before we get to the issues, let's address the elephant not in the room tonight. <laughs> Donald Trump has chosen not to attend this evening's presidential debate. The Iowa caucuses occurred for both parties on February 1st, 2016. For the Republicans, the race was fairly close, but Ted Cruz ended up taking the cake. For the Democrats, the race was even closer. Hillary Clinton ended up getting the highest, but only 0.3% ahead of Bernie Sanders. After the caucuses, many candidates who did not perform well dropped out of the race. The 8th Republican debate brought a hefty argument between Chris Christie and Marco Rubio. And let's dispel once and for all with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. You have not been involved in a consequential decision where you had to be held accountable. You just simply haven't. And the fact is, the fact is when you talk about Hezbollah Sanctions Act that you list as one of your accomplishments and just did, you weren't even there to vote for it. I think the experience is not just what you did, but how it worked out. Under Chris Christie's governorship of New Jersey, they've been downgraded nine times in their credit rating. This country already has a debt problem. We don't need to add to it by electing someone who has experience at running up and, and destroying the credit rating of his state. But I would add this, let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. You see everybody, I want the people at home to think about this. That's what Washington DC does. The drive-by shot at the beginning with incorrect and incomplete information, and then the memorized 25 second speech that is exactly what his advisors gave him. See, see, Marco, Marco, the thing is this, when you're president of the United States, when you're a governor of a state, the, the memorized 30-second speech where you talk about how great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. Here's the bottom line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is, the memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's there the it is, reason everybody. why this campaign is so important. Because I think this notion, I, I think this is an important point. The New Hampshire primaries occurred on February 9th. Unlike Iowa, New Hampshire was not a close race. Donald Trump won easily for the Republicans, and Bernie Sanders won easily for the Democrats. Both candidates won every county. The ninth Republican debate featured Donald Trump attacking Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz. Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? Now, you can take it any way you want, and it took, Je it took Jeb Bush, if you remember, at the beginning of his announcement, when he announced for president, took him five days. He went back. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. It took him five days before his people told him what to say, and he ultimately said it was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. But so you, so I mean, so, so you still think he should be impeached? I think it's my turn, isn't it? You do whatever you want. You call it whatever you want. I want to tell you, they lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and they knew there were none. There were no weapons of All mass right. Okay. destruction. Okay. All right. I could, I could care less about the insults that Donald Trump gives to me. It's blood sport for him. He enjoys it, and I'm glad he's happy about it. He but I am sick and tired, I am sick and tired of him going after my family. Pope Francis then criticized Trump for his wall proposal. E poi, una persona che pensa soltanto in fare muri, sia dove sia, e non fare ponti, non è cristiano. The South Carolina Republican primaries were a winner-take-all scenario. Donald Trump won the primary. On the same day, the Nevada Democratic caucuses occurred, and Hillary Clinton won them. A week later, Hillary Clinton also won the South Carolina Democratic primary. Jeb Bush suspended his campaign after losing South Carolina. But the people of Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina have spoken, and I really respect their decision. So tonight, I am suspending my campaign. March 1st brought the first Super Tuesday. For the Republicans, Trump won the most states. Ted Cruz won three states, and Rubia only got Minnesota. For both parties, Texas was the most important. Being his home state, Cruz got the overwhelming majority. 
For the Democrats, Clinton got seven states and Sanders got four. After Super Tuesday, the delegate standings were as follows. Trump had 332 delegates. Ted Cruz was trailing behind by about 100 delegates. Rubio had 113 delegates, and Kasich in a distant last with only 27. For the Democrats at this time, Hillary Clinton had over double the delegates that Bernie Sanders had. This was mainly due to the much higher amount of superdelegates that Clinton received. Mitt Romney then made a speech criticizing Donald Trump. If we Republicans choose Donald Trump as our nominee, the prospects for a safe and prosperous future are greatly diminished. He inherited his business. He didn't create it. His domestic policies would lead to recession. Next came the 11th Republican debate. Trump and Rubio had an exchange about Rubio's aggressiveness during his campaign. You've mocked Mr. Trump's tan. You've made fun of his spelling. You called him a con artist. You suggested he wet himself backstage at the last debate, along with other vulgar jokes and jabs. So what happened? Yeah, you know, Brett, let me say something. This campaign for the last year, Donald Trump has basically mocked everybody with personal attacks. He's done so to people that are sitting on the stage today. He's done so about people that are disabled. He's done it about every other candidate in this race. So if there's anyone who's ever deserved to be attacked that way, it's been Donald Trump for the way he's treated people in the last campaign. I also happen to call him a lightweight, okay? And I have said that. So I would like to take that back. He's really not that much of a lightweight. And as far as, and I have to say this, I have to say this, he hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I... <clears throat> Similar to the first Republican debate, each candidate was asked whether or not they'd support the Republican nominee no matter what. Senator Rubio, yes or no? I'll support the Republican nominee. Senator Cruz, yes or no, you will support Donald Trump if he's the nominee? Yes, because I gave my word that I would. And I, I will support whoever is the Republican nominee for president. Even if it's not me? The answer is yes, I will. Afterwards, John Casey complained about his lack of coverage during his campaign. Look, I got no coverage. From the time I announced in New Hampshire, I got no coverage. You got no coverage tonight. In well, the first uh, half an hour of this debate, we saw you twice. Mm -hmm. You're not exciting, exciting out there. Bill, when you have Rubio and yeah. Trump calling each other names, yeah. all right, uh, referring to various body parts, and then you are saying, you know, I worked with President Reagan and yeah. we balanced the budget. Who are they going to put on TV? But Bill, you know, it's you know what uh, one of the, the executives in broadcasting said, you know, we used to believe in freedom of the press. Now we believe in freedom of the purse. And you know what? I'm just not going to take that. Later, more primaries and caucuses were held with Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz getting the majority of the wins. The seventh Democratic debate focused on the Flint water crisis. It was beyond belief that children in Flint, Michigan, in the United States of America in the year 2016, are being poisoned. So I believe the governor of this state should understand that his dereliction of duty was irresponsible. He should resign. I know the state of Michigan has a rainy day fund for emergencies. What is more important than the health and well-being of the people, particularly children? It is raining lead in Flint. And the state is derelict in not coming forward with the money that is required. The Michigan primary occurred on March 8th. Donald Trump emerged victorious on the Republican side. The race was extremely close for the Democrats, but Bernie Sanders took the cake. There was a protest against a Donald Trump rally in Chicago on March 11th. It resulted in Trump canceling the rally. These are, these are, this is a Trump supporter here, and these are folks that are opposed. They've been having debates on the street all night. Fox News, 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 Fox News. Can you say something Fox News? why you're here tonight? I'm here because I'm proud to be a Chicagoan, because Chicago does not like Donald Trump and his ideas and I'm very proud to be a Chicagoan today. You can take you can pan the camera around and see how many people are opposed to Donald We've Trump in the city that. of Chicago. I appreciate I'm very that. proud to be a Chicagoan today. Thank you. And I, I want to listen to the UIC the student. That's college today. I'm a UIC alumni. You even worse. All right. Let's try to keep the language Thank good. You. But the, these kinds of debates, even Megan, worse. have been going on on the here. streets of Chicago oh, all night tonight. The March 15th primaries were very important for both parties. Florida was perhaps the most important. Hillary Clinton won the race for the Democrats, and Trump won for the Republicans.
The Florida race was winner-take-all for the Republicans, which rewarded Trump 99 delegates. The Ohio race was also winner-take-all for the Republicans. Being his home state, John Kasich took the cake. Hillary Clinton won for the Democrats. Rubio suspended his campaign after losing his home state. While it is not God's plan that I be president in 2016, or, or maybe ever, and while today my campaign is suspended, Later, Trump tweeted an insulting picture of Ted Cruz's wife, Heidi. Cruz responded viciously. I don't get angry often, but you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. After that, Breitbart journalist Michelle Fields accused Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski of assaulting her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he just like threw you I can't believe he just did that. Yeah, like what threat were you? That was insane. Yeah. You should have felt how hard he grabbed me. That's insane. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've never had anyone do that with a campaign. Can I put it in my story? Yeah, go for it. This CCTV footage shows what happened. In the end, Charges were dropped against the manager. The Colorado and Louisiana Republican primaries were controversial because Trump won the popular vote, yet Cruz ended up receiving the delegates. You said the nominating system in Colorado was, quote, rigged, disgusting, and dirty. You called it a corrupt deal full of crooked shenanigans. Ted Cruz is saying you're just being a whiner. I mean, the bottom line is the rules are the rules. Didn't you just get outplayed on the ground? No, I don't think so. Look, first of all, you know, I watched uh, Ted Cruz and... I watched him very strongly say, well, he's been winning, but, you know, I've won 22 states and he's won 10, and we're really uh, way up on votes, you know, in terms of the voters, which to me is very important, but it's never talked. I'm millions of votes ahead of him, and as you know, I'm hundreds of uh, delegates ahead of him, but the Colorado thing was very, very unfair, and I thought Louisiana was very unfair. I won Louisiana. I won it easily. Uh, so won I, the popular vote. I he won got the more popular delegates. vote, and yeah. because of all the shenanigans that goes on, and this but is you the, call them shenanigans. Those are the rules, and didn't you know those? You know rules? why the rooms? I know the w rules very well, but I know that it's stacked against me. The New York primary was correctly expected to be a Trump-Clinton victory. Ted Cruz was despised by New York Republicans due to his comments earlier in the year about New Yorkers. Do you remember during the debate? when he started lecturing me on New York values like we're no good. But everyone understands that the values in New York City are socially liberal or pro-abortion or pro-gay marriage, focus around money and the media. Not a lot of conservatives come out of Manhattan. I'm just saying. <laughs> the battle for the Northeast occurred on April 26th. Donald Trump won every county and every state on the Republican side and Hillary Clinton performed well for the Democrats. After that, Trump accused Clinton of playing the woman's card. You know, she's playing the women's card. By the way, if she didn't play the women's card, she would have no chance, I mean zero, of winning. She's playing the women's card. Well, if fighting for women's health care and paid family leave and equal pay is playing the woman card, then deal me in! The Indiana primary came as the last major primary for the Republicans. Trump eviscerated the other candidates in the Republican Party, and Sanders won narrowly for the Democrats. Cruz and Kasich suspended their campaigns, making Trump their presumptive Republican nominee for president. And so, with a heavy heart, but with boundless optimism for the long-term future of our nation, we are suspending our campaign. And as I suspend my campaign today, I have renewed faith, deeper faith, that the Lord will show me the way forward and fulfill the purpose of my life. Thank you and God bless. Trump held a rally in San Diego and many people were hurt in the protests outside. <laughs> Hillary Clinton reached 2,383 delegates, making her the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton has now secured enough delegates to win the Democratic nomination. This makes her the first woman ever to become the presumptive nominee of a major American party. Bernie Sanders endorsed her later on. Secretary Clinton has won the Democratic nominating process, and I congratulate her for that.
Donald Trump had been facing a court case against Trump University, and the judge for the case was of Mexican descent, which Trump disapproved of. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel. I mean, frankly, he should recuse himself because he's given us ruling after ruling after ruling, negative, negative, negative. The judge, who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great, I think that's fine. I think Judge Curiel should be ashamed of himself. The conventions for both major parties occurred in July. The Republican convention came first. Trump and his running mate, Indiana Governor Mike Pence, accepted the nomination. I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. I accept your nomination to run and serve as Vice President of the United States of America. But we will also be a country of law and order. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo as long as we are led by politicians who will not put America first, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve. My message is that things have to change, and they have to change right now. Before the Democratic convention, WikiLeaks released a batch of emails and phone calls that revealed that the DNC undermined Bernie Sanders during the primaries. WikiLeaks releasing nearly 20,000 internal DNC emails, including some that appear to show efforts to undercut the rise of Bernie Sanders. In one, a communications official considers pushing the narrative that Bernie never ever had his act together, that his campaign was a mess. In another, a top official wonders, can we get someone to ask his belief? Does he believe in a God? Adding my Southern Baptist peeps would draw a big difference between a Jew and an atheist. The response? An amen. At the Democratic convention, Clinton and her running mate Tim Kaine accepted the nomination. I accept your nomination for President of the United States. I humbly accept my party's nomination to be Vice President of the United States. America needs every one of us to lend our energy, our talents, our ambition to making our nation better and stronger. I believe that with all my heart. That's why Stronger Together is not just a lesson from our history. It's not just a slogan for our campaign. It's a guiding principle for the country we've always been and the future we're going to build. There, the parents of a Muslim American soldier who died in combat attacked Donald Trump viciously. Hillary Clinton was right when she called my son the best of America. If it was up to Donald Trump, he never would have been in America. Donald Trump consistently smears the character of Muslims. He disrespects other minorities, women, judges, even his own party leadership. He vows to build walls and ban us from this country. Donald Trump, let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will gladly lend you my copy. Look for the words liberty and equal protection of law. I saw him. He was, uh, you know, very emotional and probably looked like uh, a nice guy to me. His wife, uh, if you look at his wife, she was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. You tell me, but plenty of people have written that. Personally, uh, I watched him. I wish him the best of luck, George. What would you say to that father? Well, I'd say we've had a lot of problems with radical Islamic terrorism. That's what I'd say. We have a lot of problems where 
You look at San Bernardino, you look at Orlando, you look at the World Trade Center, you look at so many different things. I'd say you got to take a look at that because something's going on and it's not good. The polls were showing that Hillary was in the lead, but not by a runaway. In late August, Trump met with Mexican President Peña Nieto. The discussion went well, especially after remarks that former Mexican president said about Trump. I declare, uh, I'm not going to pay for that wall. He should pay for it. He's got the money. And the wall, is it a non-starter? Is there any chance Mexico pays for the wall? We did discuss the wall. We didn't discuss payment of the wall. Uh, that'll be for a later date. This was a very preliminary meeting. President Enrique Peña Nieto did not dispute that at the news conference. In September, Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters deplorable. You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. These were among the countless Americans that Hillary Clinton called deplorable, irredeemable, and un-American. The disdain that Hillary Clinton expressed toward millions of decent Americans disqualifies her from public service. You cannot run for president if you have such contempt in your heart for the American voter. There are starting to be questions regarding Hillary Clinton's health. She stumbled into a car at the 9-11 memorial and a broken into coughing fits during rallies and press conferences. Frankly, uh, you know, I hope she gets well and I hope she gets well soon. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, quite sad, to be honest with you, and, and I hope she gets well soon. The first general election debate was on September 26th. The main takeaway from the debate was that Trump would frequently take the bait from Hillary Clinton. She and the moderator grilled Trump on his refusal to release his tax returns, to which Trump lost his cool. So the question, does the public's right to know outweigh your personal... Well, I told you, I will release them as soon as the audit. Look, I've been under audit almost for 15 years. I know a lot of wealthy people that have never been audited. I said, do you get audited? I get audited almost every year. And in a way, I should be complaining. I'm not even complaining. I don't mind it. It's almost become a way of life. I get audited by the IRS, but other people don't. I will say this. Uh, we have a situation in this country that has to be taken care of. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release, I will release my tax returns. So it's negotiable? It's not negotiable. No, let her release the email. Why did she delete 33,000? Well, I'll let her ask that, but let me just uh, admonish the audience one more time. There was an agreement. We did ask you to be silent, so it would be helpful for us. Secretary Clinton. Well, I think you've just seen another example of bait and switch here. Um, for 40 years, everyone running for president has released their tax returns. You can go and see nearly, I think, 39, 40 years of our tax returns, but everyone has done it. We know the IRS has made clear there is no prohibition on releasing it when you're under audit. So you've got to ask yourself, why won't he release his tax returns? And I think there may be a couple of reasons. First, maybe he's not as rich as he says he is. Second, maybe he's not as charitable as he claims to be. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. And I think probably he's not uh, all that enthusiastic about having the rest of our country see uh, what the real reasons are, because it must be something really important, even terrible, that he's trying to hide. He also, he also raised the issue of your emails. Do you want to respond to that? I do. You know, I made a mistake using a private email. That's for sure. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I would obviously do it differently. Trump's view on the Iraq war was also brought up. Mr. Trump, you, with a lot of these are judgment questions. You had supported the war in Iraq before the invasion. What makes your judgment? I did not what, support what, the in war two, in Iraq. 2002. That is a mainstream media nonsense put out by her. 
because she, frankly, I think the best person in her campaign is mainstream media. My question Just, is, since you, you, would you like to hear? Him, why is your I was why against your the war. Wait a minute. I was against the war in Iraq, just so you put it out. The record shows I, otherwise, the record but why, does is, not show why was your, is your the judgment The record any... shows that I'm right. When I did an interview with Howard Stern, very lightly, first time anyone's asked me that, I said, very lightly, I don't know, maybe, who knows. Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you know, I wish it was, I, I wish the first time it was done correctly. Right. Essentially. I then did an interview with Neil Cavuto, we talked about the economy is more important. If you were advising him how much time you commit to Iraq versus how much time you commit to the economy, what would you say? Well, I'm starting to think that people are much more focused now on the economy. They're getting a little bit tired of, uh, you know, hearing we're going in, we're not going in. We're you know, whatever happened to the days of Douglas MacArthur? I mean, he'd go and attack. He wouldn't talk. I mean, we have to, you know, it's, it's sort of like either do it or don't do it. I then spoke to Sean Hannity, which everybody refuses to call Sean Hannity. I had numerous conversations with Sean Hannity at Fox. I think President. Donald's d disagreement has more to do because he disagreed, and I, I battled him at the time. He did not want us to go to Iraq. He, he was dead set against it. And Sean Hannity said, and he called me the other day, and I spoke to him about it. He said, you were totally against war, because he was for the war. Why is and your we, excuse judgment, me. my question was, no, no, why, is you your didn't judgment, hear what I said. why is your judgment any different than Mrs. Clinton? Well, I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. You know, I have a much better. She spent, let me tell you, she spent hundreds of millions of dollars on an advertising, you know, they get Madison Avenue into a room, they put names, oh, temperament, let's go after. I think my strongest asset, maybe by far, is my temperament. Hillary and Trump also discussed Trump's remarks about women. One of the worst things he said was about a woman in a beauty contest. He loves beauty contests, supporting them and hanging around them. And he called this woman Miss Piggy. Then he called her Miss Housekeeping because she was Latina. Donald, she has a name. Where did you find her? Her name Where is did Alicia you find Machado. Where did you find And it? she has become a U.S. citizen, and you can bet oh, really? she's going to vote okay. this November. Okay, good. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Mr. Trump, let me just take you. 10 seconds, and then you we're going to have a final question. Hillary is hitting me with tremendous commercials. Uh, some of it said in entertainment, some of it said somebody who's been very vicious to me, Rosie O'Donnell, I said very tough things to her, and I think everybody would agree that she deserves it and nobody feels sorry for her. But you want to know the truth? I was going to say something Please, extremely rough to Hillary, to her family, and I said to myself, I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's inappropriate. It's not nice. Two days prior to the second debate, the Washington Post leaked a video from 2005 of a filming of Access Hollywood which showed Donald Trump making lewd remarks about women. Oh, and she used to be very, she's still very beautiful. I moved on her, actually. You know, she was down in Palm Beach. I moved on her, and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. It, I, I did try and f*** her. She was married. It's <laughs> huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. Na no, this was... And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a... But I couldn't get there, and she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony <laughs> and everything. She's totally changed her look. She's your girl's hottest. Sh in the purple. Oh. Whoa! Oh. Yes! Whoa! Oh. Yes, the Donald Escort. <laughs> Maybe it's a different one. Better not be the public. No, it's it's her. It's yeah, that's her with the gold. I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. <laughs> I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. Yes! That is audio of Donald Trump in 2005 telling a giggling Billy Bush that one of the perks of fame is that he can grab women's genitalia without permission. The same day, WikiLeaks leaked a batch of emails from Clinton campaign manager Don Podesta's Gmail account. In leaked transcripts of remarks that Clinton delivered to Goldman Sachs employees in 2013, she says she had great relations with Wall Street as senator, while suggesting that the Dodd-Frank financial reform bill was at least partially created, quote, for political reasons. In another speech, Clinton said, in order to be a successful political negotiator, you need both a public and a private position. 
The emails also show how her campaign grappled with the political ramifications of Clinton changing her stance on the controversial Keystone Pipeline. I don't think it's in the best interests of what we need to do to combat climate change. But roughly two weeks before publicly opposing the Keystone Pipeline in 2015, Clinton had harsh words for environmentalists and said activists should get a life while in a meeting with the building trade union. Trump apologized for his comments and defended the statements at the second debate. We received a lot of questions online, Mr. Trump, about the tape that was released on Friday. As you can imagine, you called what you said locker room banter. You described kissing women without consent, grabbing their genitals. That is sexual assault. You bragged that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Certainly, I'm not proud of it, but this is locker room talk. Yes, I'm very embarrassed by it. I hate it, but it's locker room talk, and it's one of those things. I will knock the hell out of ISIS. We're going to defeat ISIS. ISIS happened a number of years ago in a vacuum that was left so, because of bad judgment, and I will tell you, I will take care of ISIS, so Mr. and Trump, we should get onto much more important things and much bigger things. Just for the record, though, are you saying that what you said on that bus 11 years ago, that you did not actually kiss women without consent or grope women without consent? I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. So for the record, said, you're saying you never did that? I said things that, frankly, you, you hear these things, they're said, and I was embarrassed by it. But I have tremendous respect for women. Have you ever and done those women things? women have respect for me. And I will tell you, no, I have not. And I will tell you that I'm going to make our country safe. We're going to have borders on our country, which we don't have now. People are pouring into our country. Secretary Clinton, do you want to respond? Well, like everyone else, I've spent a lot of time thinking over the last 48 hours um, about what we heard and saw. You know, with prior Republican nominees for president, I disagreed with them on politics, policies, principles, but I never questioned their fitness to serve. Donald Trump is different. I said starting back in June that he was not fit to be president and commander in chief. And he has said that the video doesn't represent who he is, but I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. Because we've seen this throughout the campaign. We have seen him insult women. We've seen him rate women on their appearance, ranking them from one to 10. So this is who Donald Trump is. And the question for us, the question our country must answer is that this is not who we are. So, Mr. Trump, let me add to that. When you walked off that bus at age 59, were you a different man or did that behavior continue until just recently? And you have two minutes talk, for as this. I told you, that was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I am a person who has great respect for people, for my family, for the people of this country, and certainly I'm not proud of it. But that was something that uh, happened. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. So you can say any way you want to say it, but Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously. Four of them are here tonight. One of the women who is a wonderful woman, at 12 years old, was raped at 12. Her client, she represented, got him off, and she's seen laughing on two separate occasions, laughing at the girl who was raped. Kathy Shelton, that young woman, is here with us tonight. So don't tell me about words. I am absolutely, I apologize for those words. But it is things that people say, but what President Clinton did. He was impeached. He lost his license to practice law. He had to pay an $850,000 fine to one of the women, Paula Jones, who's also here tonight. And I will tell you that when Hillary brings up a point like that, and she talks about words that I said 11 years ago, 
I think it's disgraceful, and I think she should be ashamed of herself, if you want to know the truth. Trump also threatened to prosecute Clinton if he becomes president. Last time at the first debate, we had millions of people uh, fact-checking, so I expect we'll have millions more fact-checking, uh, because, you know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> Well, Martha, first let me say, and I've said it before, but I'll repeat it because I want everyone to hear it. That was a mistake, and I take responsibility for using a personal email account. Uh, obviously, if I were to do it over again, I would not. I'm not making any excuses. Uh, it was a mistake, and I am very uh, sorry about that. But I think it's also important uh, to point out where there are some misleading accusations from critics and others. Uh, after a year-long investigation, there is no evidence that anyone hacked the server I was using, and there is no evidence that anyone uh, can point to at all, anyone who says otherwise has no basis, that any classified material ended up in the wrong hands. Most outlets consider Hillary Clinton the winner of the debate but by a smaller margin than the first debate. The third debate discussed the topic of immigration. There is almost no issue that separates the two of you more than the issue of immigration. Actually, there are a lot of issues that separate <laughs> the two of you. Mr. Trump, you want to build a wall. Secretary Clinton, you have offered no specific plan for how you want to secure our southern border. Mr. Trump, you are calling for major deportations. Secretary Clinton, you say that within your first 100 days as president, you're going to offer a package that includes a pathway to citizenship. Uh, the question really is, why are you right and your opponent wrong? Mr. Trump, you go first in this segment. You have two minutes. Well, first of all, she wants to give amnesty, which is a disaster and very unfair to all of the people that are waiting in line for many, many years. We need strong borders. In the audience tonight, we have four mothers of I mean, these are unbelievable people that I've gotten to know over a period of years whose children have been killed, brutally killed, by people that came into the country illegally. You have thousands of mothers and fathers and relatives all over the country. They're coming in illegally. Drugs are pouring in through the border. We have no country if we have no border. Hillary wants to give amnesty. She wants to have open borders. The border secure, as you know, the Border Patrol agent, 16,500 plus ICE last week, endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed a candidate. The biggest complaint they have, it's with all of the problems going on in the world, many of the problems caused by Hillary Clinton and by Barack Obama, all of the problems, their single biggest problem is heroin that pours across our southern borders, just pouring and destroying their youth. It's poisoning the blood of their youth and plenty of other people. We have to have strong borders. We have to keep the drugs out of our country. We are, right now, we're getting the drugs, they're getting the cash. We need strong borders. We need absolute, we cannot give amnesty. One of my first acts will be to get all of the drug lords, all of the bad ones. We have some bad, bad people in this country that have to go out. We're going to get them out. We're going to secure the border. And once the border is secured, at a later date, we'll make a determination as to the rest. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Well, as he was talking, I was thinking about a young girl I met here in Las Vegas, Carla. Uh, who was very worried that her parents might be deported because uh, she was born in this country, but they were not. They work hard, they do everything they can to give her a good life. He said as recently as a few weeks ago in Phoenix that every undocumented person would be subject to deportation. Now here's what that means. It means you would have to have a massive law enforcement presence where law enforcement officers would be going school to school, home to home, business to business, rounding up people who are undocumented. I think that is a, an idea that is not in keeping with who we are as a nation. I think it's an idea that would rip our country apart. I have been for border security for years. I voted for border security in the United States Senate. And my comprehensive immigration reform plan, of course, includes border security. But I want to put our resources where I think they're most needed, getting rid of any violent person, anybody who should be deported, we should deport them. So I think we are both a nation of immigrants and we are a nation of laws and that we can act 
accordingly. And that's why I'm introducing comprehensive immigration reform within the first 100 days with a path to citizenship. Hillary Clinton fought for the wall in 2006 or thereabouts. Now, she never gets anything done, so naturally the wall wasn't built. But Hillary Clinton wanted the wall. Well, let me. We let, are wait, wait, a country sir, of me, laws. We me, either me, have. And, and by the way, I, no. Wait. I'd like to hear from. Well, well, but I'd like to hear from. Se, I'd like to hear from Secretary Clinton. I voted for border security, and there are and uh, the some, There are some limited places where that was appropriate. There also is necessarily going to be new technology and how best to deploy that. Uh, but. It is clear when you look at what Donald has been proposing, he started his campaign bashing immigrants, calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals and drug dealers, uh, that he has a very different view about what we should do to deal with immigrants. Now, what I am also arguing is that bringing undocumented immigrants out from the shadows putting them into the formal economy will be good because then employers can't exploit them and undercut Americans' wages. And Donald knows a lot about this. He used undocumented labor to build the Trump Tower. Secretary Clinton, I want to clear up your position on this issue because in a speech you gave to a Brazilian bank for which you were paid $225,000, we've learned from the WikiLeaks that you said this, and I want to quote, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. So that's Thank the you. question. <laughs> that's the question. Please quiet everybody. Is that your dream, open borders? Well, if you went on to read the rest of the sentence, I was talking about uh, energy. You know, we trade more energy with our neighbors than we trade with the rest of the world combined. And I do want us to have a, a, an electric grid, an energy system that crosses borders. I think that would be a great- Relations benefit. with Russia were also but discussed. You are uh, very clearly uh, quoting from WikiLeaks. And what's really important about WikiLeaks is that the Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. They have hacked American uh, websites, American accounts of private people, of institutions. Then they have given that information to WikiLeaks for the purpose of putting it on the internet. This has come from the highest levels of the Russian government, clearly from Putin himself. That was a great pivot off the fact that she wants open borders, okay? Now we can talk about Putin. I don't know Putin. He said nice things about me. If we got along well, that would be good. If Russia and the United States got along well and went after ISIS, that would be good. He has no respect for her. He has no respect for our president. And I'll tell you what, we're in very serious trouble because we have a country with tremendous numbers of nuclear warheads, 1,800, by the way, where they expanded and we didn't, 1,800 nuclear warheads, and she's playing chicken. Look, Putin, well, wait, wait, wait. from everything I see, has no respect for this person. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, that the, the Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States of America, that you encouraged espionage against our people, that you are willing to spout the Putin line, sign up for his wish list, break up NATO, do whatever he wants to do, and that you continue to get help from him because he has a very clear favorite in this race. Less than two weeks before election day, the FBI announced that they were reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email scandal. Another crisis. An LA Times reporter came up to our uh, traveling press secretary, Nick Merrill, and, and said, hey, have you heard anything about some reopening of the investigation by the FBI? I kept thinking, this can't be, this has to be a mistake, it's got to be referring to something else. The FBI director, James Comey, was resuming an investigation of Clinton's personal email server. And I just remember this pit in my stomach and really worrying that this could change the game completely um, in, in a, you know, in a potentially lethal way. The polls just before the election showed Hillary Clinton in the lead by about three points. Almost everybody, including Donald Trump, were sure that the election would end in a Clinton victory. And she looked at me and she's seen these rallies and she said, you're not going to lose. I said, no, I'm telling you, the polls are looking very big. She goes, you're not going to lose, my wife. So then I figured, hey, look, it's just a nice wife that's trying to 
Be nice. So now the polls just closed and they start announcing numbers. And I say, oh, this is going to be embarrassing. I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do. It wasn't until around 10 p.m. on Election Day that that started to change. That is correct, Brian. And I have to tell you, at the beginning of this night, there were moments in which this crowd broke out into cheering. Those moments are getting fewer and far between. And I think you pick up on the optics and the mood in the room, Brian, which certainly has become a lot more tense as they have seen these screens light up with a lot of red. Uh, but again, Secretary Clinton's top surrogates say they're still confident that she has a path to 270, that she still has a number of paths to 270. Trump had suddenly taken Ohio. We have a major projection right now. Donald Trump will take Ohio. CNN projects Donald Trump will win Ohio with its 18 electoral votes. A relief for Donald Trump. No Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. He has won Ohio with its 18 electoral votes. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map to see where it stands now. Big win for Donald Trump in the state of Ohio. Right now, he is ahead of Hillary Clinton. He has 167 electoral votes compared to Hillary Clinton's 109 electoral votes. You need 270 to win the White House. Donald Trump is ahead of Hillary Clinton right now. Jake and Dana, Jake, this is a big win. He needed Ohio. He got Ohio. This was the first real swing state that Trump had gotten. Throughout the night, it had been a tight race for Florida. Uh, but Florida making everyone a little bit more jittery than they had anticipated at this hour. In the end, at about 10.50, the Associated Press called it for Trump. And we have a projection. It is a big one. It is the state of Florida. 29 electoral votes. They go to Donald Trump. Donald Trump has won the state of Florida, one of his must-win states right there, one of his keys to victory. He said all along he was going to win that state. He's got a home in that state. He worked hard in that state. He has pulled out a victory there. He is, put, he is pulling ahead of Hillary Clinton. You see it right there, 222 electoral votes to 197 for Hillary Clinton. Matthew Dowd, this is a big one. Oh, it's huge. This was the one that, that for the last month, the Clinton folks said, if we win Florida, it's all over. Donald Trump absolutely needed it. He got it. And now, as we've talked about, he has many different ways to get to the 270 votes he needs to be the next president of the United States. After Trump won North Carolina at about 11.15, Hillary's only hope was through Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Trump took Iowa and Utah, both battleground states. At Clinton HQ, John Podesta told the supporters to go home. So we're not going to have anything more to say tonight. So listen. Listen to me. Everybody should uh, head home. You should get some sleep. We'll have more to say tomorrow. At 2.30, Trump broke the so-called blue wall and scored Wisconsin, a state that hadn't voted Republican since 1984. CNN now projects that Donald Trump will carry the state of Wisconsin. He will win Wisconsin with its 10 electoral votes. He's cracked the so-called blue wall that Hillary Clinton had tried to create. Uh, Donald Trump wins Wisconsin. Take a look at this, 92% of the vote is in. He's up by 75,000 votes, plus 10 electoral votes. Donald Trump, the winner in Wisconsin. Secretary Clinton called President-elect Trump to concede the election, and Trump spoke on stage afterwards. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. The business tycoon and TV personality capping his improbable political journey with an astounding upset victory. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business, complicated. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division. We have to get together. To all Republicans and Democrats and independents. If this morning you finally woke up from a coma, well, you might want to go back. You're awake, by the way. You're not having a terrible, terrible dream. Also, you're not dead and you haven't gone to hell. This is your life now. This is our election now. This is us. This is our country. But everybody should feel grateful that we get to vote. And if we don't get our way, we have the chance to try again. This is what it feels like when America is made great again. I, uh, I was wondering, and uh, I was really hoping it would feel better because this sucks. If you 
like me, the implications of this have been hitting you in waves. One minute you're numb, and the next minute you realise that Donald Trump, this man, will soon have access to the nuclear codes. And then maybe you get distracted by daily life until it hits you again. Or oh, our future president was supported by a former Grand Wizard of the Klan, and 60 million people voted for him despite that. And then maybe you finally manage to get some sleep, but then you wake up realising, oh, the Supreme Court! In the end, Hillary ended up winning the popular vote, but Trump took home the electoral victory. There are many reasons why Donald Trump won the election, and I will go deeper into that in the video Why Did Trump Win the Election? This election was an exciting one to say the least, and Donald Trump's presidency has already been full of surprises, so who even knows what's going to happen next?